From the Rinconada in Peru, the highest city in the world, to the Bunda Cliffs in Australia, here are the most isolated and inaccessible places on Earth. Let's head for Rinconada, a mountain town in Peru, where a few tens of thousands of inhabitants live, almost all of whom work in the gold mine and almost never leave their town. However, it can happen that these people want to leave Rinconada to go to another town, for example. However, this experience often proves to be very tiring for them because their city is located at more than 5,000 kilometers of altitude. Indeed, the Rinconada is considered as the highest city of the world. And to reach it is sometimes impossible, because only a truck with all-wheel drive can take along whoever would like to visit the city one day. It is true that the inhabitants of La Rinconada have become accustomed to this altitude. In spite of the extreme conditions in which they live, these people can even consider themselves much happier than most of us, because their position allows them to live far from the problems usually encountered in other cities. But because of this altitude, the inhabitants of the Rinconada are constantly confronted with certain health problems, especially because of the lack of oxygen in this area. On the other hand, very few doctors dare to venture into this very high city, which prevents its inhabitants from getting the necessary care when needed. But fortunately, the inhabitants of the Rinconada do not seem to suffer much because with time and over the generations, they have ended up developing remarkable capacities of adaptation. Even better, these people have become an extremely important case study for the scientific community. Are you a wilderness lover and have you been dreaming of visiting one of the lost corners of the planet for quite some time? Perfect! But one day, while you were surfing the net, looking for a good place to live this experience, you came across an island whose name immediately caught your attention. Deception Island. So you did some research to find out more about this island with a strange name. And you were not disappointed. Your research revealed that this isolated and uninhabited volcanic island is located in the South Shetland Island in the Southern Ocean. And that it is home to a colony of penguins and many other species of birds, as well as the remains of a former whaling station. However, the idea that the volcano is still active and that the black sandy beaches, the border of the caldera, are still steaming up has left you cold. Only at first, because you learned that the volcano, although active, has now erupted for many years. And then, the island of deception still welcomes Spanish and Argentine researchers who come to conduct their studies. That is reassuring. And to think that you have become more and more fascinated by this isolated but enchanting island. You are now in the western United States, more precisely in the state of Arizona. Naturally, you want to visit one of its canyons, but you are surprised to discover that there are places there that are difficult to access, such as the village of Supai, which is nestled in Havasu Canyon in Coconino County. Despite all the difficulties, you decide to go there, armed with all your will. You get there, of course, but at the cost of an unimaginable effort, because you have just walked all the distance. That's right, you may not have known it, but Supai is only accessible on foot, or at best, by mule. However, you forget the tiredness as soon as you set foot in the small Indian village, where only less than 500 people live. Well, for an experience, it is well won and it was well worth it. Moreover, you will keep a very good memory of it, which will remain engraved in your memory forever. Do you know the Tristanis? They are the inhabitants of Tristan da Cunha, a volcanic island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean that is part of the British territory. Contrary to what you might think, these people are not soldiers in the service of the crown, nor scientists conducting studies, and even less special envoys. But ordinary people who wanted to live and stay forever on this island. Except that these people are isolated from the rest of the world. Indeed, Tristan da Cunha is considered as the most remote island of the world. And for good reason. It is located at approximately 2,800 kilometers of South Africa and at more than 3,000 kilometers of South America. Can you imagine that? 
Only a fishing boat will be able to take you there if you embark from Cape Town in South Africa. And still, it is necessary to count several days at sea. But the inhabitants of this island, whose number has been estimated at 245 inhabitants in 2020, lead a rather simple and ordinary life based on mutual aid and equality. Thanks to this particular way of life and their geographical position, the Tristanese live as they wish, in a joyful and good mood, without violence and without the problems of the rest of the world. But their isolated situation often makes it difficult for them to adapt to the modernity of the the world in general, as happened in the 1960s when they were evacuated to England after the eruption of the Queen Mary's Peak Volcano. However, this uncomfortable situation does not last long for them, because they almost always end up returning to their beloved island and their way of life, even after long studies abroad for example. Because of all this, the Tristanese have become a fascinating community for many researchers and curious people around the world, and their lives have even been the subject of many new stories. Imagine that you are an explorer and you would like to go and discover Umiyaken, a Russian village you have just heard about and which is located more than 5000 kilometers from Moscow. However, you are surprised by one thing. You can't go there by plane, because these machines land there only when the weather permits. Not only do you have to travel a very long distance, but you also have to drive on icy roads, cross a frozen river and spend perhaps days before you get there, as this village is one of the most remote places in the world. However, you prepare yourself for this mission and let's go for the adventure. You finally arrive in Omiyaken, very happy to carry out your mission. On the other hand, the cold which reigns there prevents you from moving. Moreover, you are strongly surprised by the temperature which displays your thermometer as soon as you arrive there. Minus 70 degrees Celsius! Oh, welcome to Omiyaken, the coldest inhabited place in the world. Fortunately, you are hosted and helped by some of the rare inhabitants who still live in this place lost in the depths of eastern Siberia. Whoa! Here is a mission that you may never forget in your life. You will keep some good memories of it all the same. Jean-Baptiste Charles Bouvet de Lozier was a French navigator and explorer who one day started an expedition in the southern hemisphere looking for some interesting place to discover. But after a few months at sea, this navigator was surprised to discover a piece of land covered with snow and a glacier. Surprised, he decided to set a course and mobilized all the means at his disposal to be able to land. In vain. He was nevertheless able to record this uninhabited island and even give it a name by calling it Cape Circoncision. This expedition must have exhausted him because of the harsh climate and the difficult conditions in which he had tried to land on the island, which he forgot as soon as he returned to Cape Town to return to France. On the other hand, thanks to this expedition, Bouvet became the first man to discover this volcanic island and to describe its glaciers and its fauna. If he were still alive, he would be happy to know that this lost island in the South Atlantic Ocean, which is now part of Norway, bears his name. You love islands and you dream of spending your vacations on an isolated and paradisical island, right? But you know that it is impossible, because isolated and paradisical islands don't really exist at the same time. But you decided to do some research to find that island where you can spend your vacations far from everything. And you found it. This is Pitcairn Island, an island lost in the Pacific Ocean, between Tahiti and Easter Island, and which is considered the most remote tourist destination in the world. However, you were shocked to learn that this island is only accessible by boat. Not only that, but it's made of vertical hills that you'll have to climb, which can make the trip quite challenging. But you forgot everything as soon as you looked at the first pictures of this island, which is populated by only 50 inhabitants, and discovered the activities that can be done there. You were more than ever determined to visit Pitcairn Island. Hiking and adventure lovers are often looking for interesting places they always want to discover, like 
Cape Melville National Park, which is located in Queensland, Australia. Except that this place is one of the most isolated in the world because of its remoteness from everything. But that doesn't stop these adventurers from carefully considering the route to the park. If they take into account the weather and if they respect all the instructions given to them, they generally end up arriving there. But at the price of a great effort. Because the roads are sometimes rough and very difficult to use. However, all this quickly forgotten at the moment of arrival at the park of Cape Melville. Because for these adventurers, nothing is more amusing than to arrive at an isolated place and to benefit from its landscapes. With a maximum of safety, of course. And it must be said that these people always keep in memory the sensational experience. The Tibetans are one of those people who are very attached to their land and to their customs that they would never want to abandon for anything in the world. However, it must be said that the inhabitants of the roof of the world live in isolation from everything. Indeed, Tibet is one of the most inaccessible regions in the world because of its very high altitude of about 4,500 meters. However, in spite of everything, these people known for their strength and their tenacity do not seem to care. On the contrary, the Tibetans live according to their own rules and their daily life is shared between religion, yak breeding and colorful festivals. Moreover, thanks to their impressive and rich culture, they also receive many tourists among the most reckless who do not hesitate to take the rugged mountain roads to discover the region. Although tourism and the influx of adventures to Tibet do break their peace a bit. They are always happy to share their fascinating culture with others and teach them some of their rules. It is no wonder that Tibetans have become an inspiring people. And now let's go to Australia and more precisely the Great Australian Bite. You already know this region located in the south of the country and you'll probably want to know what's interesting about it, right? Then you will be amazed to discover the Bunda Cliffs, spectacular cliffs that measure between 60 meters and 120 meters in height and that stretch over a distance of 200 kilometers. This is suddenly interesting. This leads you of course to do some research on these cliffs which border the flat plain of Nularbor and naturally the information you get is not lacking. On the other hand, it disappoints you a little to know that these magnificent limestone cliffs are far from everything and that it may never be possible for you to go there one day. What a shame! At least it is possible to see them from one of the viewpoints along the ocean road and even from the sky. But in the meantime, you can always admire them on the internet. Looks like you're pretty impressed with the Bunda Cliffs, right? You have just discovered the most isolated places in the world. Among these inaccessible places, which ones fascinated you the most? Leave us your answers and impressions in the comments. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video.